Hello, my name is Michael Aikenhead. I am an R&D scientist with Thermo Fisher, uh, and today I'm here to talk about how we are addressing some of the needs of 3D suspension culture systems through the optimization of a new 3D pluripotent stem cell medium that we have been developing. Well, first, uh, let's talk about why researchers would want to utilize suspension culture. Now, the main appeal of suspension culture is the ability to rapidly scale up to large numbers of cells. This can be accomplished in a shorter period of time, uh, such as 19 days to achieve 4.5 billion cells compared to an adherent culture, uh, which in this case is 28 days to achieve 4.5 billion cells. Uh, furthermore, suspension culture is also less expensive than adherent culture due to suspension culture is utilizing less plastics and consuming less media in comparison to adherent cultures. Now, although suspension cultures are very appealing due to the advantages they have over adherent cultures, there are still some technical challenges which must be overcome. Uh, this can be observed when comparing the two main categories of suspension culture systems, the microcarrier culture and the steroid culture. The microcarrier culture involves cells growing on a three-dimensional substrate, uh, such as beads, gels, uh, or other such structures. While this does enable consistent cell growth, since cells do have a defined surface area for growth, there are several drawbacks to the microcarrier system. Uh, in particular, microcarrier systems are very time consuming to prepare, uh, and researchers may struggle to adhere cells to the microcarriers. Furthermore, the passaging protocols to safely remove the cells from the substrate tend to be long and tedious, uh, and could potentially result in some microcarriers remaining present within the recovered cells. Story cultures, in contrast, are much more appealing to researchers. The story culture utilizes the ability of cells to self aggregate into floating spheroidal clumps. Uh, thereby eliminating the need for cells to grow adhered to a microcarrier substrate. While this does simplify the initiation of steroid cultures, there are still some drawbacks to the steroid culture. Uh, in particular, the aggregate size is harder to regulate than a microcarrier system, potentially leading to the formation of the necrotic core as the steroid increases in size. Consequently, uh, this could also result in a loss of pluripotency as the cells become stressed and then spontaneously differentiate. Uh, some researchers have also expressed dissatisfaction uh, with some of the existing suspension culture medium systems currently available in the market, uh, as these systems generally have a low cell expansion potential and may have cumbersome workloads, uh, such as the inclusion of cell strainers during passaging. Uh, furthermore, these systems tend to have inconsistent steroid formation uh, and inconsistent growth across multiple different cell lines. So combined, these factors led us to create a new type of suspension culture medium, we wanted to maximize the expansion capability of pluripotent stem cells and simplify the 3D workflow, all while maintaining the pluripotency of cells grown as spheroids. So to accomplish this, we developed the StemScale pluripotent stem cell suspension medium. StemScale is capable of promoting a high fold expansion, and depending on the cell line, it can generate anywhere from a five to a 10 fold expansion per passage, uh, which tends to be up to three times greater expansion capability than other available medium that we have tested. Uh, the stem, stem scale workflow is also simplified as users can easily exchange medium without losing spheroids and can pass the spheroids without having to use a cumbersome cell strainer. Stem scale is also able to maintain a consistent growth across multiple culture vessel formats from six oil plates up to larger bioreactors. And lastly, stem scale can also promote the maintenance of a consistent steroid size across multiple passages during expansion. Steroids can be reliably passaged every four to five days without a loss in steroid potency or viability. Uh, so next, let's uh, briefly discuss the stem scale workflow. Here's the stem scale workflow at a glance. The workflow involves the seeding of 3D culture vessels on day zero. After seeding, cultures must be fed using a 50% medium replacement strategy. This replacement strategy prevents the accumulation of waste in the suspension culture. Furthermore, this also contributes to maintenance of a consistent steroid size, and steroids will be grown in a constant volume for the duration of the suspension culture. The 50% medium replacement can occur daily or every other day. Uh, the example illustrated here shows an every other day feed schedule with medium exchanges occurring on day one and day three. Cultures are then ready to be passaged either on day four or day five, uh, with the example here shown for a typical five-day schedule. Cultures can also be passaged as early as day three, although the cell yield will be lower than normal due to the shorter growth period. Uh, 
in addition to stem scale medium, it is also important to have an orbital shaker platform, the Stem Pro Accutase Passaging Reagent, and the desired vessel which will be used to grow suspension cultures. The orbital shaker platform uh, must be heat shielded and compatible for use inside a cell incubator. Otherwise, the suspension cultures placed on the orbital shaker may overheat and result in cell death. If well plates are utilized for suspension cultures, the non-tissue culture treated plates should be selected. Uh, for shaker flasks, it's best to use the plain bottom flasks uh, as, as the non-baffled, uh, as any type of baffled flask could interfere with uh, spheroid formation. With all these materials in place, the stem scale suspension cultures are ready to be initiated. The stem scale cultures can be easily seeded from existing adherent cultures. Once adherent cultures are around 60 to 80 percent confluent, they can be dissociated using a stem pro acutase reagent and then seeded into the desired vessel of choice. Uh, we recommend seeding vessels at a seeding density of around 100,000 to 150,000 cells per mil. And when seeding cells, it's also important to include a rock inhibitor along with the single cell suspension on day zero. Without the rock inhibitor present, the cells will not spontaneously aggregate together into steroidal clumps. After seeding suspension cultures on day zero, the cultures will need to be fed on day one. Because these suspension cultures have formed steroids overnight, we can utilize gravity sedimentation to collect steroids at the bottom of the vessel, enabling a medium exchange from the top of the vessel. Gravity sedimentation should occur for five minutes to minimize the amount of time steroids spin clumped at the bottom of the well. If steroids remain sedimented for too long, then they will aggregate together into large, undesirable clumps. This can also occur if cultures are removed from agitation for extended periods of time, such as when imaging steroids under a microscope. So to avoid undesirable steroid aggregation during imaging, uh, it's best that steroid observation be completed within 15 minutes. By minimizing the time that suspension cultures are removed from the orbital shaker platform during feeding and imaging, uh, it's easy to avoid undesirable spheroid aggregation. To accomplish the five-minute gravity sedimentation, well plates should be tilted at a 45-degree angle to collect spheroids at the bottom of the well. Shaker flasks can simply be removed from the orbital shaker platform, enabling spheroids to descend to the bottom of the flask. After five minutes, half of the spent stem scale medium is carefully removed from the vessel and replaced with an equal volume of fresh medium. The vessel has been gently agitated to redistribute the spheroids and then placed back onto the orbital shaker platform to continue the suspension culture. Now, the 50% medium replacement strategy is very beneficial for spheroid cultures. It is simple to perform as it only relies on the gravity sedimentation of the 3D spheroids, which will rapidly settle due to their large size. Uh, because of the simplicity of gravity sedimentation, this can easily be amenable to automated cell culture and closed systems. Furthermore, because of the 50% medium replacement strategy, uh, adding an equal volume of fresh medium to the removed spent medium, this ensures the culture vessel volume will remain con constant for the duration of the suspension culture. This is important as spheroid size is affected by the shear force applied to the system from the orbital shaker platform. If the culture volume increases or decreases, then the spheroids will experience a different shear force, leading to their overall size also increasing or decreasing. Uh, by maintaining a constant culture volume, this eliminates any negative effects which may result from changing the culture volume uh, inadvertently. Uh, and most important, the 50% medium replacement strategy prevents the accumulation of waste products over the culture duration. Uh, batch feeding processes, which simply add fresh medium to the existing spent medium, will often see met uh, metabolic waste products accumulate far more rapidly compared to a replacement strategy. All of these factors together make the 50% medium replacement strategy desirable for suspension cultures. Uh, passaging the spheroids with stem proacutase is a very simple process. Once the spheroids are ready to be passaged, they are then transferred into a separate conical tube. The spheroids are then centrifuged to collect them at the bottom of the tube, and the spent medium is carefully aspirated. Spheroids are then resuspended in stem proacutase for 10 to 15 minutes, depending on the vessel type. Uh, once the duration of the 10 to 15 minute incubation is over, then the spheroids should uh, periodically be agitated to promote dissociation. Uh, at the end of the incubation period, the spheroids should begin to easily break apart upon gentle agitation. The spheroids can then be triturated with a pipette to break apart any remaining clumps, and then spun down again in a centrifuge to collect resulting single cell suspension. Uh, this single cell suspension is then counted and reseeded into new culture vessels for continued growth. Uh, at this point, the cells can easily be scaled up into larger vessels to generate greater numbers of cells in the following passage, or uh, alternatively, uh, instead of continuing them into additional passages, they can also be used in downstream applications if the scale up of cells is no longer necessary. The 
STEM Pro or the STEM scale pathogen protocol offers several benefits to researchers looking for a simple protocol. Most importantly, there is no need to utilize self trainers or microcarriers in the STEM scale pathogen protocol. The self trainers are cumbersome to use and can often damage cells during pathogening. Uh, this improves the viability of the cells. Additionally, cells may become stuck on the cell strainer, resulting in a lower cell yield than desired. By simply utilizing Aculus with no cell strainer, there is limited manipulation required during the protocol, reducing the risk of contaminating the culture. Lastly, the pathogen protocol is also scalable, as it can easily be adapted to any desired type or size of vessel. Now, there are a few additional experimental variables which users can manip manipulate to control spheroid nucleation and growth. For example, by modifying the shaker platform RPM, users can increase or decrease the size of spheroids after nucleation. The shaker platform RPM is inversely related to spheroid size, so by increasing the RPM, uh, the spheroid size will be decreased after nucleation. Our recommended shaker platform RPM is 70 RPM, which results in spheroids with diameters of approximately 400 microns by day five. If this RPM is increased to 90 RPM, uh, the end result, once the culture is ready to be passaged on day five, is an average spheroid diameter less than the 400 micron diameter observed at 70 RPM. Now, the culture vessel volume also plays a role in spheroid size uh, with cultures grown on orbital shaker platforms by affecting the uh, shear force applied to the spheroids in culture. The culture vessel volume is directly related to spheroid size. By increasing the vessel volume, it will also increase the spheroid size due to the spheroids experiencing an altered shear force from the orbital shaker platform. So when modifying the spheroid size, we recommend altering the RPM before altering the culture vessel volume. Uh, however, by increasing the RPM and culture vessel volume simultaneously, uh, you can keep the spheroid size relatively constant uh, while growing them in a greater volume than media. The seeding density is another parameter that can be easily modified from our recommended seeding density of 150,000 cells per mil. Increasing the seeding density of the culture will improve the cell yield due to greater numbers of spheroids forming in culture. Uh, however, the culture media will also be consumed at a greater rate due to the increased numbers of steroids. So if modifying the seeding density, uh, it's not advised to seed at a density that is doubled from a recommended value, uh, making 300,000 cells per mil at the upper limit. Uh, you'll also have to likely switch to feeding cells or feeding your cultures every day uh, as the uh, media being consumed at a greater rate will make uh, skipping media feeding days a little more difficult. So now that we've discussed the stem scale protocol, I'd like to demonstrate its performance uh, with some experimental data. Uh, here, we see the stem scale promotes the rapid expansion of cells in suspension. Uh, you can see a representative image of our Gibcobzomal IPS seed line in the upper left. And this is how the steroids will appear after five days of growth in our stem scale medium. The two graphs represent growth in either well plates or shaker flasks of varying sizes. In all cases, the expansion of the Gibco Abysmal IPSCs is high, averaging approximately tenfold across all vessel sizes, from the small well plate formats to the uh, 1,000 milliliter shaker flasks. Uh, the spheroids all formed consistently and grew at the same rate, indicating the consistent performance of stem scale across multiple formats. Uh, in addition to rapid growth, the stem scale medium also maintains pluripotent cells over multiple passages. On uh, this slide, we see that Gibcobzimal IPSDs uh, and WA09, or H9 cells, uh, exhibit greater than 90% expression of OCT4 and NINOG markers and assist after five passages in suspension. This is further confirmed through the use of our pluritest assay, which indicates that the cells from the 3D spheroids all remain pluripotent. We also observed that these cells maintain a normal karyotype as assessed through the karyostat assay uh, seen on the bottom. So together, this data shows that the stem scale uh, enhances fold change while also maintaining the pluripotency and karyotype of cells grown as spheroids. Now, in order to prevent the formation of the chronic core, the spheroids should be passaged when the average spheroid diameter is approximately 400 microns. When spheroids are grown in stem scale medium, this can be performed on either day four or day five of culture. Uh, this data here is what contributed to our recommended passenger schedule of approximately four to five days per passage, as the average spheroid diameter will be approximately 400 microns around this time period. Even if the average spheroid diameter is slightly above 400 microns on day five, the cells obtained from the spheroids will be highly viable. 
uh, spirit can also be passaged on day three when the average diameter is much smaller. And this is generally not recommended as the overall cell yield will be low if passaged on day three. Uh, however, if a day three passaging schedule is necessary, such as just before the weekend arrives on a Friday, then it is still possible to perform a stem scale medium. Uh, as the enhanced cell yield from the utilizing stem scale will ensure sufficient numbers of cells will be present even after being grown for three days. Now, as we previously discussed in the protocol overview, stem scale cultures can be fed daily or every other day. Uh, by feeding stem scale cultures daily, uh, this is the easiest way to ensure spheroids will remain highly viable. Uh, however, we show data here indicating that cultures fed every other day can perform just as well as the cultures fed daily. Uh, there is a minimal impact on the overall full change across three consecutive passages. And additionally, the expression of OC4 and nanog markers is similar in both cases, indicating cultures which skip feed days will also remain highly pluripotent. Uh, now, in addition to wool plates and shaker flasks, stem scale also performs well in large bioreactors. Uh, the graph displayed here shows consistent performance between wool plates, shaker flasks, small bioreactors, uh, and large bioreactors. Uh, this data indicates that scaling up the stem scale medium is very easy to perform. Starting from a six wool plate, it is easy to scale up to a 500 mil bioreactor while maintaining consistent performance at all the intermediate steps. And all the previous data displayed has utilized the good copazomal IPSC line. Um, here we show that stem scale is compatible in a variety of different cell lines. We have images for two IPSC lines, uh, the good copazomal IPSC and the WTC11s, and two ESC lines, uh, the WAO1 and the WAO9, or H1 to H9 cells. And the graph at the bottom shows the performance of these three lines, uh, or these four lines across three different uh, consecutive passages. All cell lines here show consistent performance uh, between the passages. And note that the cumulative fold change is cell line dependent, as some cell lines respond better to spheroid nucleation than other cell lines. Uh, in total, when uh, we include the data that our alpha tester provided us from testing stem scale, we evaluated over 10 different cell lines and seeing compatibility with all tested cell lines. Uh, while the stem scale protocol is intended to rapidly scale up and utilize cells within a few short passages, stem scale can also promote uh, the long-term growth of spheroids in suspension culture. Uh, here we can see the spheroid expansion remains consistent for gib copazomal IPSC and WAO9 cells uh, across 15 consecutive passages. Uh, the gib copazomal IPSC has maintained an average of about 12-fold expansion between passages, while the WAO9 has maintained an average of about 15-fold between passages. Uh, additionally, uh, the pluripotency of these cells at passages 5, 10, and 15 show a high expression of octor and nanog, with both markers exhibiting greater than 90% expression as assessed by flow cytometry. And here on this slide, uh, we show how the enhanced uh, growth of steroids in the stem scale medium uh, cannot perform other suspension medium currently available on the market. In this case, we compare stem scale spheroids against another medium uh, referred to as medium M here. Um, the stem scale spheroids in this case averaged an 11 fold expansion per passage, while the medium M spheroids uh, averaged a 5 fold expansion per passage. By the end of passage 3, the stem scale resulted in a cumulative fold change of about 33 fold, where medium M resulted in a cumulative fold change of about 15 fold. Both stem scale and medium M also showed high expression of OX4 and nanon markers as assessed by flow cytometry. Uh, so this indicates that stem scale is capable of outperforming medium M while still maintaining very potent cells over the course of these three passages. So in conclusion, stem scale very potent stem cell medium offers a simplified workflow for suspension cultures, which does not require the use of microcarriers or cell strainers during passaging. We demonstrate that it is scalable across multiple culture vessel formats, and the spheroids exhibit high expansion potential. Furthermore, these spheroids remain pluripotent as they grow, enabling them to be utilized in downstream differentiation applications. Um, I would also like to briefly mention that our stem scale PSC suspension medium is now available to be purchased for early access.
Uh, so this now concludes my presentation, and I would be happy to take questions at this point. Thank you very much.